Hey, thanks for coming back to the Outdoor Workshop. Today we're going to be taking a look at two additional water filters as a supplement to the first water filter video we put out. We have the Life Straw and the MSR Trail Shot. Let's see how they compare. In order to properly test these filters, we're going to be running them through four different tests. We have a 16 parameter test strip, we have a total dissolved solids tester, we have a microscope, and then we have a bacteria test kit that'll take 24 hours to run. First, let's take a look at some of the functions and features of these filters before we get into the test. To start both of these filters on the same baseline, they're both brand new. Each of them filter down to 0.2 microns, which is equivalent to 1 5,000th of a millimeter. Both of these use the same tiny fiber membranes to filter down to 0.2 microns. When exposed, you can see it's like a lot of tiny fiber straws that only allow things smaller than 0.2 microns to filter through. Observing it under the microscope allows you to see it a little bit better. Most bacteria are 1 to 10 microns, so 10 to 100 times larger than the filter size on these. The smallest bacteria on earth only go down to about 0.3 microns, so these still have you covered. The trail shot folds up to only 6 inches and weighs in at 5 ounces. This filter costs $55 and it pumps at a rate of 1 liter per minute. The lifespan of this filter is only 530 gallons, but you can replace the internal cartridge for only $32 to bring it back to new. You can see here you can take most of the pieces apart which enable you to clean it a little bit more in detail. Putting it into the water you can start to see some of the challenges with keeping the screen inlet out of the mud. The reason that the flow rate is only 1 liter per minute is due to the time that it takes to refill the bulb on every pump. Next up we have the Life Straw which weighs in at 1.6 ounces and is 9 inches long. One of the biggest advantages of the Life Straw and the reason why it's used around the world is the cost. It's only going to set you back $18 to pick one of these up. This low cost also gives you a high lifespan of 1,000 gallons. Because everything's internal, it's not as easy to clean this filter. You'll see here later in this video a great way to maintain and clean this filter when it does start to slow down. I found a little dammed in area over here that has a lot of sediment and it's very stagnant. So I'm going to run about 10 liters through each of the filters to see how they hold up. Since I'm not going to suck 10 liters of this life straw at the ground level, I found you can also use a water bottle to force some water through. It's not ideal and it's not a way to fill up something on the trail but it'll get us through this test. The first test we're gonna run here is the water test with 16 parameters. You can see here, it's gonna be testing for pH, hardness, hydrogen sulfide, iron, copper, lead, manganese, total chlorine, mercury, nitrate, nitrate sulfate, zinc, fluoride, sodium chloride, and total alkaline levels. And it's going to be differentiated based on the levels, depending on what color the test strip turns. Here you can see the final results. The filters did not noticeably change or alter the properties and characteristics of the water. The next test is going to be to test the total dissolved solids. We'll immediately move it to the bacteria testing kits to see what the results are. Here's a comparison of the basic stats of each filter with the total dissolved solid results. You can see the baseline of 20 parts per million and 202 parts per million 
It was surprising to me that it didn't take more total dissolved solids out. Many of these solids don't come out because they're much smaller than the filter level, and it's things like iron and other minerals that are okay to drink. After looking about 24 hours later, you can see the original water source tested pink, which means it had some signs of bacteria. The samples from the filters, on the other hand, all showed that there were no bacteria detected. Here's a quick look at what it looked like under the microscope for the dirty water. You can see there's a lot of large particles floating around. And moving over to the filtered water, you can see these products did a great job at removing the solids. There's no discernible difference between the end results of each of the filters, so this is just an example of one of them. After running each of the filters through about 10 liters at the lake, they started to slow down, but it wasn't fast enough. So I found the dirtiest water possible and started running it through each of the filters. The MSR seized up instantly, and I realized it was actually because of the sediment that was being caught at the screen. Cleaning this out enabled me to keep the filter going for the rest of the time, and I was never able to actually seize up the internals. The life straw, however, seized up almost instantly. Let's take a look at how we might clean these up if we were out on the trail. The first step in cleaning the MSR trail shot is to clean the outside screen. This is the part that is normally touching the sediment when you're pumping for filtration. Once the outside screen is clean, you can dip it into some water and start pumping. Pump the bulb about halfway full and then shake it up to remove debris from the internal filter. You can repeat this process multiple times until the inside water is clear. Since the life of this filter is fairly short, when you start to feel it slowing down a lot and can't clean it, just replace it. Screw off the top and then take off the external handle and you can pull the internal filter compartment out. The first best practice to keep your life straw clean is just to blow out whenever you're drinking on the trail. Routine flushing will help to prevent it from getting backed up. If you notice your life straw is starting to slow down, just take it to a clean water source and continuously take water in and push it back out using your mouth on the traditional mouthpiece side. If you can't restore the flow using this method, it's probably time to buy a new filter. In the end, these are both unique options when it comes to filtering. The MSR trail shot is great for getting into tight places, but it's not ideal for filling up when you're holding a bladder, trying to get the intake not in the sediment, and pumping with your other hand. The life straw, on the other hand, is difficult to use because you need to get your face down into the water where it's most likely muddy, and then when you're drinking, you can only drink on the go, so you're not going to be able to store water or use it for future use. I don't recommend either of these for the trail, but they're both good backup options to keep in the car or in the bag if you're traveling.